Good morning children. This is Mrs. Sheila Bosco for the next lesson Fiber to Fabric. In this lesson we are going to learn about our basic needs and uh, how it has improved. All that we'll be learning. Our basic needs are food, shelter and clothing. Food is improved so much. Shelter, the buildings are improved so much. Naturally, the clothing also has got a tremendous improvement. Now, because the early men used to wear only the leaves of the big leaves he used to wear in summer are barks of the trees. During the winter, he feels very cold, so he killed the animals and take the skin and start wrapping around or covering himself. Now, those can we call it as clothes now? The fleas and the animal skin, we never ever call it as clothes. It's only a wrapping part. It's only covering thing. We call them as bed sheets nowadays. Yes? Now, early man first started the agriculture with the cotton and rice, paddy, wheat and all that. Cotton has made into thin fibers, that is thin uh, thread like thing. Then that is made into a big cloth. We call that thin thread, we call it as fibers or long threads. That has been given to the yarns. It may be man made or uh, machine made. Then it will be weaved into a fabric. The process goes like this. The piece of cloth, we call it as a fabric and that will become a dress. The yarns are given, uh, sent it to the yarns. The, then it has been weaved into fabric. Fibers to yarns, then weaved to fabric. Fabric is made into clothes. These clothes of different types. Types of clothes, modernization, all that is done with the tailors. Types of fibers differs. During summer, people wanted very soft and natural uh, clothes. That's why they used cotton clothes during summer because it will make them cool. During winter, it has to make them warm. So they used woolen clothes. Then jute also equally good at school. Say they started using it. But daily uses, usage Managing cotton and wool, it's very difficult. That's why they used acrylic or polyester or uh, uh, any other clothes, you know, synthetic fibers. Because easy to maintain, no need to iron. Now, these are divided into two types. These fibers are divided into two types. One is a natural fiber, the other one is a synthetic fiber. Natural fibers are divided into animal fibers and plant fibers the plant fibers we get it from cotton jute flakes coir animals we get it from silk moth goat sheep camel all this we get it from the animals synthetic fibers are made into the lab where the petroleum products plastic made into plastic the thin plastic only it is a synthetic fibers thin threads it is be polyester nylon acrylic all your uniform are polyesters that's where you're sitting a lot some synthetic fibers are treated with made using natural fibers how they take the natural fibers and treated chemically are processed chemically and used as a artificial silk artificial wool rayon because what all the difficulties they faced in the natural fibers they will take away all those uh, problems and make it as artificial ones you know what is natural fibers you know what is synthetic fibers you know the example from where we are getting what how the process is done to get cotton fiber into cotton fabric we have plant fa fabric so many we have learned some are cotton jute flakes and hemp these are all natural plant fibers 
Now today we will see how the cotton fibers are made. The cotton plant is a shrub. It is a small plant with a woody stem. Usually it grows in a black soil. It grows very well in black soil. That's why it grows in Punjab, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh. In these areas cotton grows well because it contain more of black soil. It is a uh, bushy plant. It is a small plant and it we call it as shrub. A plant with the woody stem and a small plant, a bushy plant we call it as a shrub. The flower will be yellowish in color. Once after few days it become a pinkish whitish pink color. Then lemon sized cotton ball will grow from the flower and the lemon sized cotton ball will be green in color. It will be green lemon like. After that it will burst open. Once it's burst open the whole field will look like a snow covered because the cotton soft leathery cotton will be uh, just opened out. Then they will take the by hand they will collect the cotton alone. The collected cotton will have the seeds. These seeds are taken by combing like ordinary like you know how we comb our hair. That process is called ginning. Early days it was done by the hand. They were combing it. The ginning is done by the hand. Nowadays we have a ginning machines. This will be made into a without seeds. Then it made into threads and into yarn and then it is weaved into a fabric, soft fabric and sent it to the textiles. It's used for making clothes, mattresses, uh, pillows, small beds and big beds all that. Next we are going to the golden fiber. Why it is called golden fiber? Because of the color. It has got a golden light, golden color. It's also a good fiber. This grows mostly in Bihar, West Bengal and Assam. It is a long jute plant. Then during the flower harvesting, during the flower time, they will take it. And outer skin is the important part. That skin only, that is called ribbon or outer skin. That is only the main part, the stem outside cover. They tie it and put it in a water, slow flowing water. This will be there for a five days. Then they'll take it, it will become loose. They'll pull out the skin alone. That is only needed for making jute fiber. This is called the taking of jute fiber from the plant. We call it as a retting. This is used, mostly used to make uh, big, big uh, jute fibers are used for uh, making sacks, coarse cloth, curtains, coir mattress, uh, then rugs and all the, what do you call, uh, big threads, all this. It's very useful. Now you have learned how two natural fibers are converted from a fiber to fabric. Now we will continue to the next animal fiber that is a very costly fiber and is used in all the good occasions that is silk our favorite fiber just move on how it is made the silk is very important and very luxurious luxurious means shiny it is elastic and strong fiber then this made into yarn it is very stronger than a steel wire that's why years together we'll keep the silk sarees it's dyeing also very easy that's why we get in different colors branded silk uh, materials are mulberry eri tasser and muga these are all silk thread names first we'll take the mulberry it's very common and we'll learn about it now we get the silk fiber from the cocoon of the silk moth 
now you could see the silk moth then the silk moth lay lot of eggs on the mulberry leaves it chooses a mulberry plant and it it lay the eggs we'll take the first one leaf and single leg this leg egg become larger and breaks open you will get a small worm like structure that is called silk worm or caterpillar this caterpillar it's a very good eater what happens it comes out and start uh, life on the mulberry leaf and start secreting a protein material thin fiber like material thin thread like material start rotating on the body of it it's like a eight keep on rotating it that is a protein fiber that's why it's very strong these fibers only we take it as a silk now these fiber will go on this stage we call it as a pipa once the pipa stage is over what happens we call that stage when the pipa all the threading is over we call it as a cocoon we take the cocoon and the butterfly will come out that is the moth will come out then you take the silk thread and weave it weave it for silk sari or whatever material the rearing of silk worm we call it as a sericulture this is the life history of a butterfly and how we get the silk fabric we will see how the wool is converted into fiber how the fiber into wool now just we'll take see the sheep the outer covering of the sheep is called fleece it is used for making sweaters shawls and other leather products there are four process shearing squaring sorting and dyeing now we'll see what is shear shearing is nothing but they'll bring the sheep during the hot weather because the cold weather if you remove the fleece they will be very uh, it's very hard for them that's why during the hot weather uh, how the barber how the man who uses a knife like thing they'll shave it it is not painful for them because the outer skin is dead so they remove the whole part of the hair from the sheep during the hot weather without disturbing the sheep after checking this is called we this process is called shear during this process uh, the collected uh, hair will be sent it to the next process now these fibers will be very dirty this dirty fiber contains grease pains all the dirt is which is down dust a mud all that will be there because this has to be clean that is called squaring this uh, done in the machine or the process mostly done in the machine nowadays before it was done by the hand after cleaning it up the color itself will change become white and they dry it up then after drying they'll send it to the machinery for sorting already you know what is the meaning of sorting separating according to the length according to the color according to the texture texture means whether it's soft or hard the whole uh, the soft materials used for woolen clothes and the coarse material used for making rugs small fibers are used for sweaters long fibers are used for making shawls or something like that now three process are over this is mostly white in color because from the sheep suppose if you are taking from the buffalo it will be black in color the basic colors are white brown and black these are the basic colors according to the animal then they dye it they color it then straighten it comb it to make it neat roll it and then make it a yarn and send it to the factories textile factories the larger fibers for sweaters the shorter fibers for woolen clothes 
the longer fibers for shawls the shorter fibers for small uh, baby clothes okay with that we have learnt about animal fiber in this lesson you have learnt a lot about fibers and fabrics then here i want to mention i many time i used the word weaving here there is a hand weaving i said and uh, this one when you look at mr gandhi ji you must have seen how he was sitting in front of a chakra and making a thread those days they were doing it at home like that the weaving the process of arranging two sets of yarns one will be on the machine one will be tied up they can use two colors or same colors because if you look at a sari there are different colors they use so many colors but one will be the base on the machine or on the weaving panel in that they will do the tuck 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 music that music will make them to weave that is called weaving now uh knitting knitting is done by the hand of people you must have seen all the old ladies they'll be knitting sweaters caps and all this beautifully they'll do it that is hand uh, knots are done by knitting okay these are all the new words you have learnt and with that i finished the lesson it's because last year you have learnt the lesson the first part like you know primary part you have already known that's why i've gone little deep in this please learn go through the videos and learn then the rest part question answer part i will give it in xerox copy thank you stay safe